Today, today, we're gonna win. We're gonna fight, fight, fight. Notre Dame stops it. The Irish win the game. We play together, we play for each other, and we play to win. Inside Notre Dame Football with Brian Kelly is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame members Coca-Cola, Sprint, Gatorade, and Under Armour. Inside Notre Dame Football is also sponsored by ATI Physical Therapy, Bank of America, Cadillac, CBTS, Xfinity, Meyer, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, Sirius XM Satellite Radio, and UPS. Well, I thought they handled uh, being on the road for the first time in a hostile environment. Uh, It was like a national championship setting. And then they handled Florida State very well up front. Our our lines did a very, very good job, and we matched up physically. Needed to make a couple more plays. If we did that, we'd be talking about a great win. Notre Dame head coach Brian Kelly talking about his team's performance in their showdown with Florida State Saturday night in Tallahassee. Hello again, Irish fans, and welcome to this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Football with Brian Kelly. I'm Jack Nolan. The Irish led for most of the contest and appeared to have pulled out a dramatic road upset victory on the game's final drive, only to have what probably would have been the game-winning touchdown nullified by a controversial penalty call. But despite the loss, there is no question the way the Notre Dame football program is viewed nationally changed for the better after Saturday's game. I think we had to overcome maybe some of the national perception of the way we played against Alabama, and I think probably this righted the ship in that sense. So I think nationally people look at our football program and say, this is a darn good football program, a darn good football team. They can play with anybody. Now we've got to keep playing. Now we've got to keep winning football games and continue to develop our football team to the level where you know, we're competing you know, for playoff spots. This is Pete. Pete is helping his aunt move. So he's not thinking about tires right now. But if he were, all he'd need to know is TireRack.com. They post their own test results and user reviews so he could get the right tires for his car in as little as one business day. But Pete's not thinking about tires. Pete's thinking it would have been nice if his aunt had mentioned the minor bird. TireRack.com. Find, deliver, install. All across America, people are making the move to improve their TV and Internet service by dropping satellite and switching to Xfinity. Satellite was so frustrating. Bad customer service is one of my biggest pet peeves. Comcast customer service has improved a lot over the last few years. I love Xfinity On Demand because there's a lot more options for my kids to watch. I'm Michelle. And I'm Martin. And we weren't happy with satellite, so we switched to Xfinity. Join the move to improve and try us risk-free for 30 days. Get started with Xfinity TV for just $19.99 a month for a year. Call today. Sweat. It says I was here. I worked here. It says I only have so much to give before I have to take. What I lose, I want to get back. Sweat says I earn this. Gatorade, created to help replace what you sweat out. Notre Dame took a 7-0 lead over Florida State with that impressive first quarter drive that ate up nearly seven minutes and covered 84 yards in 12 plays. Nine of the 12 plays were running plays, with Tari and Folston leading the way, picking up 45 yards on seven carries. And I think that that's kind of what we wanted to establish as a, as a toughness, a mentality of running the football, you know, getting after Florida State. You know, we made a big move three weeks into the season, changing our entire offensive line around. I think we're starting to see the, the effects of that and running the football right at Florida State. Your first touchdown, the goal line pass to Corey Robinson. Just a little uh, rollout pass uh, to, to Corey. You know, ever threw the ball on time, a good way to start the game. With the game tied at seven, your defense gets great pressure on Jameis Winston, forces him to throw the ball up over the middle, and Joe Schmidt picks it off. We were just coming off a turnover of our own, so that was a huge turnover. We had talked about, listen, when, the, when there's a chance to make a play, you got to make the play, and, and Joe made the play. He got hit uh, while he was going up for the football. Uh, linebackers sometimes don't come down with those uh, interceptions, uh, but Joe is uh, the kind of guy that's going to make that play shorthanded, uh, and, and we capitalize. 
in the first half, your defense really seemed to keep Winston off balance. Well, they couldn't block us. You know, we had uh, Brian, I thought, did a great job, Van Gorder, of dialing up a number of different looks and pressures, and uh, they really had no answers to pick us up. We came free most of the night. You know, we were challenged a little bit in the secondary in terms of being able to, to hold up and, and cover. And, you know, we did the best that we could against a very talented group at Florida State. If we could have held on a little bit longer there, um, we would have still uh, been able to knock Winston down more. But um, I thought we did a great job of, of getting after him and, and really attacking, obviously, their protections. You scored two plays after the interception, a 22-yard pass to Chris Brown and another touchdown pass to Robinson. Uh, nice little... Um, Short roll to the back corner of the end zone. Great throw, great touch, rolling to his left. Everett puts a great ball where only Corey could go up and get it. And a well executed play. Your defense responds with a three and out. You have momentum. You have the ball at midfield, fourth and one, and you decide to go for it. You know, we felt we had a good play in there. They had shown on quarterback sneak that they really pinched everybody down. Um, so we had a little quick pitch on out on the perimeter. Their defensive end came off, made a good play, and, you know, one of those plays where. Uh, you think you have a good play set up. Uh, and we felt like we were going to be able to pick it up and keep the momentum and, and really get after them, and they turned it into three points. The defense, as you said, held Florida State to a field goal. You have another good late second quarter drive. You get a field goal. At halftime, you're up 17-10. You know, we really dominated the first half of play. Even though we were only up seven points, it was pretty clear that you know our guys felt very good about where they were and what they needed to do in the second half. We still had a lot of work to do. We dominated the first half, but again, I think our guys felt really good that they could come out in the second half and win the game. The Notre Dame program has moved beyond moral victories in year five of the Brian Kelly regime, but when your team takes the second ranked and defending national champions down to the wire on their home field, there is no shame in singling out the players who excelled on the field for your team. I asked Coach Kelly to talk about the offensive players who impressed him the most against Florida State. Controlling uh, the time of possession, um, controlling the line of scrimmage, I think was absolutely key. So I'd say our offensive line and quarterback you know, really set the tone for the game early on. Before earning enough cash back from Bank of America to help pay for her kids' ice time. Before earning 1% cash back everywhere, every time. And 2% back at the grocery store. Even before she got 3% back on gas, all with no hoops to jump through. Katie used her Bank America Cash Rewards credit card to stay warm and toasty during the heat of competition. That's the comfort of rewarding connections. Apply online or at a Bank of America near you. Got him in group as a go. Oh. Yes! <laughs> Not just a startup, an upstart. Gotta get going. Gotta be good. Good? Good. Growth is the goal. How do we do that? I talked to UPS. They'll help us out. New technology, smart advice. We focus on the business and they take care of the logistics. UPS. Good going. We get good? That's great. 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 <laughs> I love logistics. This is Kenny. Kenny is a dentist, but he races autocross on the weekends. But he's not thinking about his tires right now. Kenny buys all his tires from TireRack.com. Using their exclusive test track reviews, he knows he's always getting the right tires for his car. But Kenny's not thinking about tires right now. Kenny's thinking, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. This is awesome. TireRack.com, proud sponsor of the TireRack SCCA National Solo Program. Jameis Winston showed why he is the reigning Heisman Trophy winner when he led the Seminoles on an impressive 70-yard touchdown drive to start the third quarter, completing all seven of his passes along the way. But the Irish offense did not flinch, immediately responding with an 83-yard touchdown drive of its own. A very important drive for us to go back and answer uh, the score because they went down there pretty easily throwing the football, and we, we had a very nice drive where we mixed it up, ran it, threw it, and I thought that that was probably one of the best drives we've had all year. 
Will Fuller was a very important man on this drive. He's a marked man now because of his success, uh, but you got a number of passes completed to him on the drive, including the 11-yard touchdown. As you can see from that game, we motioned him a little bit more, tried to move him into some different positions to take some of the press coverage and double coverage that he's starting to get, uh, and we're able to free him up on the perimeter, get him one-on-one, -on -one. and our screen game has been very effective. We're able to get a screen out to him, and He's so good with the ball and can find his way through it, and we hit it pretty good. They, they were bringing pressure we thought they would, and he kind of walked into the end zone. Winston obviously is an outstanding quarterback, and he got into a rhythm in the second half. What adjustments did Florida State make to help him get into that rhythm? Throw the ball. Throw it, throw it, throw it. Forget about running it. I think they said that there's no way we're going to run the football on this team, and let's go get their corners. And, um, and they attacked an area where we're depleted, uh, quite frankly. He was not standing back there. He had to get the ball out quickly because we were still getting to him, but uh, they definitely made some plays on the perimeter. Kyle Brinza became Notre Dame's all-time leading field goal maker in the game. He had two, and the second one gave you uh, your final lead. Not only can he kick the football, but you know he really sets us up late in the game You know with an incredible punt. Not only is he accomplished now an incredible goal of being the all-time leading field goal kicker, he handles all the other jobs, so irreplaceable for us. And that punt put Florida State back inside their own 10, and it was just a terrific defensive stand by your team. Boy, we had a chance for safety there, uh, which obviously would have changed the complexion of the game a little bit as well. We're, we're looking for three instead of seven, but our defense did a great job on that stand, uh, played, played the kind of defense that you need for us to get the football back and gave us the ball back in great field position. Fourth and 18, and Golson again comes up with a 20-yard completion. Just an incredible play where he gets uh, a run back uh, from Corey, which is a deep comeback, flushes to that side and uh, makes a great throw. And Corey obviously does a great job stretching out and getting us the first down. At this point, being in a fourth down situation at the end of the game is becoming rather routine for your team with yeah. the game on the line. It's fourth and goal at the two, and you appear to score what would have been the winning touchdown. Yeah, again, we run out of a bunch formation, a play that we hadn't run actually at all this year. Just one of those things where, where we felt like we executed it the right way. The officials saw it uh, differently. There were other opportunities for us to make plays. Um, if you're going to take the title from somebody, if you're using a boxing analogy, don't let the referees decide it. Knock them out. And uh, we had a chance to knock them out, and we didn't. And it came down to one play, and, you know, we didn't get the call. But we're proud of our team. We're proud of the way our guys really played uh, on the road in those conditions and um, physically handled uh, Florida State. There is your final score. Notre Dame on the short end of a 31-27 score. The 31 points are the lowest total the Seminoles have scored in the 20 games Jameis Winston has started at quarterback. Notre Dame is now 11-2 and ranked in the top 10 under Brian Kelly, the only other loss coming to Alabama in the 2013 BCS title game. Acknowledging that the only stat that really matters every week is the final score, the final stats of this game show just how well Notre Dame played against Florida State, making the loss all that much tougher for the Irish to swallow. So many plays in this game could have been selected as this week's ATI physical therapy, strong and true moment of the week, but no play was more important than the 11-yard touchdown pass to Will Fuller on Notre Dame's first possession of the second half, a drive and score that sent the Seminoles a message they were going to have to play a full 60 minutes if they expected to beat the Irish on this night. Don Crickey has the call. 11-yard line, here's a quick out, ball is caught inside the 10, inside the 5, and in goes Notre Dame. Will Fuller with his eighth touchdown catch of the year, and Notre Dame breaks the tie. As much as a loss like this hurts Irish fans, none of us can possibly fathom just how difficult it is for the players who work so hard and put themselves in position to pull off a monumental upset. But shortly after the game, numerous Notre Dame players met with the media and handled themselves with tremendous dignity and grace. Did some very good things tonight. You know, some guys played very, very well. And I mean, I got all the faith in the world in our offense. They play their butts off. And uh, the guys in my defense, we did, you know, we all played for each other. And well, we proved something to ourselves, and that is that we can play together at any, at any point in the game. Just uh, we rely on each other. Like I said, they just played really well. But we came in the mindset we're not going to back down because they're in Florida State, you know, defending national championships. We're going to go out there and we're going to attack them. And we tried to do that, and we, we had, you know, some success. But like I said, they outplayed us. 
Everett Golson led the Irish to 470 yards of total offense, the most by a Florida State opponent at Doe Campbell Stadium in nearly four years. Golson also delivered his fourth three-touchdown pass game of the year and third 300-yard passing game in the last four contests. But it was not good enough to get the Irish a victory, so it was not good enough for Golson. Uh, definitely disappointed right now. Uh, I mean, I think uh, for me, uh, you know, I'm more so disappointed in myself, uh, to be honest. Uh, just that last drive, uh, I told my guys, you know, we was going to go down and score. And, uh, you know, we didn't do that. Um, and I'm a firm believer in, you know, uh, big time players make big time plays. And, uh, you know, I just, you know, didn't make, make the last play uh, for whatever reason. Notre Dame put together five scoring drives in the game. Here's Coach Kelly's pick for this week's TireRack.com drive of the game. The responding drive in the third quarter I thought was key. Uh, I think it gave our entire team the confidence uh, that we weren't going anywhere, that this thing was going to go down in the fourth quarter, and whoever had the ball last was probably going to win the game. That was definitely the key drive. Evolution of luxury continues. The next generation 2015 Escalade. Sprint has done it again. First, there was the Sprint Family Share Pack. A family of two, four, or even ten gets unlimited talk, text, and 20 gigabytes of data to share with the entire family for only $100 a month. That's double the high speed data of ATT, Verizon, and T Mobile. Double the data. And now check out Sprint's new unlimited plan. Individual lines of unlimited data, talk, and text at just $50 a month per line. Our lowest price ever. $100 a month for the family, $50 a month for individual lines. Sprint, it's the best value in wireless. The Notre Dame band is a huge part of the atmosphere that surrounds every Notre Dame home game. But in the closing moments of Notre Dame's thrilling victory over Stanford, one Notre Dame assistant drum major, Russell King, became an even bigger part of the game than he had ever dreamed possible. So that fourth quarter, uh, when he just scored the touchdown, I was going crazy, um, pulling, come from behind, fourth and 11. I uh, couldn't believe it. It was just like uh, two years ago, my sophomore year when we had the goal line stand at the end. It was, it was amazing, and, but we knew we had one minute left and we really had to bring it uh, and be loud because Stanford was gonna be on offense in our end and we really had to rattle them and uh, get in their heads. Yeah, so the kick, uh, so I was still celebrating from after the, the touchdown, but uh, you know, I saw it in the air and I realized, oh, I can catch this. Really <laughs> <laughs> kind of band caught it. <laughs> I'd throw another bag flag on the bed. Don't remember much of it. <laughs> um, you know, it was so cold and uh, such a great atmosphere by that point. But uh, yeah, I thought, wow, I can't believe I just caught a football from uh, Kyle Brinza. But then I quickly went to realizing that uh, we needed to start playing. You know, that's our job as a band. And uh, definitely that was the most important part that we need to be playing of the game. So uh, I went right back into drum major mode. You think uh, you're going to be catching any more balls? Coming <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. We'll see if I can uh, catch some balls uh, coming up. We're glad we were able to extend Russell's 50 minutes of fame just a little bit longer. Notre Dame linebacker Joe Schmidt's fame will continue to grow as he has another year of eligibility remaining after this one, and that's good news. Not only has Joe become the quarterback of the Irish defense, making sure everyone is lined up correctly for every play, he is also the team's leading tackler after seven games. As you are about to see, Schmidt brought the same intensity to this week's 60-second drill that he takes with him onto the field every day. Favorite musical group or artist? Jack Johnson. What did you do on your first date? Went to the beach. Most famous person you have met? Brian Kelly. Place anywhere in the world you would like to visit? Um, an island somewhere. What is your favorite location at Notre Dame? Somewhere along the river. Get up early or sleep in? Get up really early. What is your pregame routine? Uh, shave my face, meditate, with, meditate, hang out with Greer. Assistant coach who is most like Coach Kelly? Uh, uh, um, Coach Dan Brock, I don't know. Toughest player to tackle on the team? Cam McDaniel. Best singer on the team? Me. Best dancer on the team? Me. Best comedian on the team? Me. 
Best comedian on the coaching staff. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Coach, Coach Elliott. I like him. He's funny. Best dresser on the team. Cammy Daniel. Worst dresser on the team. <laughs> uh, deep. Best thing about playing for Notre Dame. Um, it's the greatest university in the world. I'd love to play for him. Joe Schmidt, you completed the 60-second drill on Inside Notre Dame Football. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. A couple of quizzes. <laughs> Dinner? I don't know. Oh, love that. Send me the recipe. You too, Mom. Hey, Jay. Hey, what are you doing? We're just sitting down for dinner. Perfect. Mind if I join you? You did it. Whenever you're close to Meyer, you're a little closer to home. financial institution is behind many of the milestones in your life. Pick one that sees you as more than just an account number. Own your dreams. Join a credit union today. It's time now for this week's Ask Coach Kelly question presented by CBTS. This week's question comes from Lou Amberg of Groveland, Massachusetts, who asks, Coach, do you ever worry about opposing teams stealing your signs? I do not. We are so complicated, I can't even figure out our signs. So if somebody, you would have to film us, really, and then try to decipher them because we have one signal can mean a formation and it also means a play. So you'd have to know whether we're giving the play or the formation. I've had these signals for 25 years in some form and fashion and um, very rarely have I ever had um, the whole code broken. Now we've had a piece here or there, but very difficult to break our, our system. If you would like to send in a question for Coach Kelly, just log on to und.com and click on Ask Coach Kelly in the rotating boxes in the middle of the main page. Notre Dame will get a weekend off before heading out to Maryland to take on Navy on November 1st. It is unusual for the team to have two bye weeks in the same season, but it is a perfect situation for this Notre Dame team at this time. This team needs two bye weeks. Um, so if there's any way that we can petition the NCAA every year, we'll, we'll want two bye weeks. So we need, we need some time off. These guys need to recharge it because we've got, we've got a gauntlet coming back. You know, the next five games uh, are going to be huge challenges. So this will be a good week for us. The bye week also coincides with fall break for all Notre Dame students. The team will practice on Monday and Tuesday of this week before heading out of town for that much needed time off and away from campus. This year's Navy team is struggling a bit at three and four on the season, but they are again one of the nation's leading rushing teams. Their 342 rushing yards per game ranks second in the nation to Wisconsin. And of course, the midshipmen always play hard for 60 minutes against the Irish. Navy will um, undoubtedly play their best. It's a national TV game. It's their bowl game, if you will. Uh, they know that. Uh, so we'll have to play our absolute best. And that will do it for this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Football with Brian Kelly. Since the team is off next weekend, we will take next week off as well. But we'll be back in two weeks with all the highlights of the 88th meeting between Notre Dame and the midshipmen. Until then, thanks so much for watching. And as always, go Irish. Inside Notre Dame Football with Brian Kelly has been presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame members Coca-Cola, Sprint, Gatorade, and Under Armour. Inside Notre Dame Football is also sponsored by ATI Physical Therapy, Bank of America, Cadillac, CBTS, Xfinity, Meyer. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, Sirius XM Satellite Radio, and UPS.